Welcome to Fundamentals, an educational series for FRC teams. Team management is the key to an organized season. Join us to learn a little bit more about team management. We'll be covering how to organize your team through preseason, season methods, and softwares, as well as how to work your plan. Join us for the first episode of Fundamentals. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Hi everybody, I'm your host, Riley. I'm a first alumni volunteer and the head coach of FRC 3481, as well as FTC 408, 4602, and 6976. I'm Dan. I've been involved with FRC since 2015, and I'm currently a mentor of Team 93 New Apple Corps. Hi, I'm Denny. I'm currently a mentor of Team 7112 Evergreen. I'm an alumni and a volunteer, and I've been involved in the forest since 2013. Preseason organization is a really great way to set up your team for success. Simple things like inventory, so common parts can be ordered before season starts, can really make or break the build season. Uh, how does your team approach team management during the preseason? Yeah, Riley, I really prefer the term prep season instead of preseason because effectively what you're doing in the preseason is prepping for the actual season, whether that's raising funds or ordering stock and motors or training new mentors or recruiting. Um, everything you're doing is focused around getting ready for the actual season to be able to iterate faster and be more successful as a team. Yeah, I really agree with that. You really want to use that time to prep and also like kind of reflect on how your last season have been and decide what you did like, what you didn't like and test new things out, stuff that you were like, oh, you know what, I really want to try this, but we ran out of time or we didn't have the resources and now we can actually do them. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, we spend a lot of time making sure that our leadership structure and hierarchy is in place, um, both for the students and for the mentors. Um, we do all kinds of like off-season projects. We do inventory. Um, we actually powder coat our robots. So we do a lot of work pre-powder coating um, so that all of the powder coated metal is ready by the time the kickoff happens. Um, we make sure that, you know, all of our new students are very familiar with our communication platforms and uh, how to use Slack, Zoom, um, Google Drive, all of those things. Um, and then we start to get, you know, all of our different things set up. Uh, we run a bunch of workshops close to kickoff, so we really do use it as a time to prep um, and really just kind of get everything organized so that by the time of the chaos of build season does start, we're not scrambling. Yeah, I really like uh, what you said about uh, having your team kind of get included and get to know everyone as well, uh, specifically in build season. I mean, we're spending a lot of time with our teammates, our mentors, um, and the whole team in general. And having a team dynamic that works well together can really uh, be beneficial during the build season. I agree. Um, having three FTC teams with an FRC team, we do a lot of like, you know, we use FTC as almost a teaching tool. Um, our students go through FTC, they learn a bunch of things. And then when January starts and, you know, we start to move over, people will start to move over as their FTC teams don't advance. Um, they'll start learning. That's how they get further into CAD and further into programming. And so it's also a really good way to start kind of the pipeline of moving kids all the way up through our program. Um, we're not starting from scratch because they're already learning a lot of the similar things that we do with FRC. Yeah, I really like your point about like the workshop part. I know that for us here in Israel, we actually get a lot of really cool opportunities where teams or people from the community would actually give workshops or lectures about um, the topics they're um, know the most about and then everyone can kind of like come and join in and it's a great opportunity to learn and share knowledge but also kind of come together as a community and create those connections that could really be useful for you during the season itself. Yeah going off of that um, we I, I'm a huge advocate of, of learning through doing um, so a lot of, of how my students learn and I've heard this over and over again from my students as they graduate but so much of how they learn is by teaching our team or other teams um, 
Bronkbots, you know, we're situated in San Antonio, which is not an area that's super dense with first. And so we run a lot of workshops for newer teams that pop up both FTC and FRC. Um, we're mentoring a rookie FRC team right now. And so, you know, a lot of our workshops that we're running right now are going, we're either recording them and we're sharing them out um, or we're just doing them live for other teams. We host teams in our workshop. And so it's also a really great way to start doing that outreach so that it continues through the season. You kick off those projects now, it's a lot less kind of, you know, grunt work during the season when there's less time. We hope you're enjoying this video here on fun. If so, do make sure you click that subscribe button to stay up to date on all fun YouTube videos and give the video a thumbs up. It really does help. We'd like to thank this show's sponsor, Kettering University, for their support of fun. Those who are accepting the Kettering University are eligible to achieve up to $5,000 a year in a robotic scholarship. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to get more information about Kettering University and the robotic scholarship. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics to so go attend somewhere that has so many other people like you at kettering.edu slash first. Moving towards kickoff. Kickoff can be super overwhelming. Um, meeting deadlines is crucial. Making sure that your team shows up to the competition with a complete robot. Um, those deadlines are really important. And so um, what are some tools and methods that your team uses to start the build season? So um, for us currently, what we found that works the best is a combination of uh, Monday.com and Trello for us to kind of keep track. We have all of those deadlines, but I really believe that it's something that's very fluid. It depends on what student you have in the year itself, and it should change between teams because there's so many tools out there that you really need to find what works best for you. And it doesn't have to be just one platform. I've met teams that told me, oh, we only use Discord. And I'm like, but you shouldn't because there are different aspects of other platforms that might give you something that Discord doesn't have or Monday doesn't have. And you can kind of build and mix and match your own. Yeah, I'm going to throw in a tool here that I think it's overlooked really uh, often with how many online tools we have. And online tools are great. But I think sometimes it's best to go back and go old fashioned. And I'm going to talk about whiteboards. Uh, irregardless of any team I've been on, whatever policy there's been at the district level for communication outside of the school, Whiteboards have always worked wonderfully. Get yourself a nice big pack, nice whiteboards, uh, have the team own them so you don't have to erase them uh, day after day. And whiteboards, man. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, I'll, I'll go back to communication is key. Um, having been part of a team where I'm not a district employee, but I am the head coach. So I do most of the teaching, but not being able to communicate with students um, is super difficult. So. We use Slack. Um, it's a really great way. We can set up channels. We can separate all of our conversations so that it's not too much information for any one person. Um, I can set up Zoom through there that the district can monitor. Um, we can share you know, pictures. We actually, going back to your whiteboard point, we have a whole channel that we call the whiteboard dump channel. And it's literally just pictures of the whiteboard at the end of every day. We have a, a, uh, we have a bunch of smaller whiteboards, but we have a whiteboard that is the size of a wall and it's double-sided. Um, and so we use both sides of that every day um, during build season. That's actually set up in a like Kanban style. So we have a not started and in progress and a finished section and then a stuck section. And we literally, we sticky note, we sticky note or we write on the whiteboard. Um, and so that's part of how we track things. We also really love using monday.com, um, which has a partnership with first. Um, what's really cool with monday.com is they have a Kanban feature. They have a Gantt chart feature. Um, so they're very similar to Trello. You can do a lot of the same things, um, but also it's an industry standard. Um, I worked for Rev over the summer and we used monday.com as part of my work at Rev. Um, and so I'm, I feel like they're also getting relevant industry experience, which is key for, for you know, these students who want to get into engineering. Um, but I also like my programming team for the longest time used uh, Basecamp and Asana. So pick something that works for you. Um, some teams, whiteboards are the way to go. Physical, just make sure that you can share out the whiteboard in some way, shape, or form. And if that's a mass email, that's a mass How email. does Basecamp work? Um, some teams work really well with you know, an online system. Um, that being said, I find that it is key to make sure that you have multiple layers of defense on who is maintaining whatever method it is. It can't all fall back down onto the mentors, it can't all fall down onto the team captains. It needs to be someone's job. And if they fail, someone's job. And if they fail, someone else's job. 
because everybody gets overwhelmed during build season. Those students are starting to get into like, you know, their finals and their testing stuff that, you know, some of the seniors are looking at college applications. So multiple layers of defense is key. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Riley, on uh, having multiple students responsible for each thing, uh, particularly dur during the build season. I mean, everyone involved is a student. Um, they're, they're super hands-on, but life happens, school happens, family things happen. And having multiple students that all know where a project is at and can pick up that project and move it forward to the next day uh, will definitely help you uh, throughout the build season and meeting some of your goals, which talk about soon yeah i definitely i definitely agree it's um we have a so we have our team captains and then we have project managers but like below them and then we have sub team captains and so the project managers it's their job to maintain all of this stuff um but when they struggle or they don't know how to set deadlines they talk to the team captains who can talk to our sub team leads um and so we have weekly captains meetings where we just like get everyone on the same page uh, make sure that the mentors are up to date with what's happening. Make sure that all of the captains are okay with all of the deadlines and what's happening there. Um, and it ends up being a really good way to just keep everybody on track, on task, up to date on what's going on. Um, those notes are are key to making sure that everyone is, everybody is successful. So going back to software, um, this is kind of the, the front face of Monday.com. Um, this is a really great thing because you can separate things into projects. You can add notes, due dates, statuses, priorities. Um, it's a really great way to kind of communicate. You can go and throw notes in at the end of the day. Um, what's really cool about this is you see that Gantt and that Kanban um, section. So a Gantt chart is kind of a timeline view. It will show you overlaps and how things are interacting and when certain things need to be done so that other things can happen. Um, Kanban is a way to organize those by progress. So in that status column, you would see that some of these things would be in the section of not started. Some of them would be in working on it. Um, eventually you can mark some of them as finished. You can mark, mark them as stuck. I mean, so Kanban is a great visual way to see what's, you know, in already in progress, what's being worked on and what isn't so that you can kind of continue to move those things along. I really like monday.com because you get all of those in one software instead of having to separate them out. Um, and so you get a really good kind of visual representation and collaborative software that allows you to use all of those things. So using a combination of all of the programs that we've talked about can really make a difference um, between chaos and organization during the build season, where all of the initial organization is incredibly important. Uh, it all leads to enforcing and maintaining those deadlines. You can plan all you want, but unless the plan is being followed, nothing can get done. How do you guys enforce and maintain timelines? I, I think deadlines are always a tricky topic. Uh, as as I've, I've said before uh, on this episode, above all else, uh, these participants are students. Uh, having hard deadlines, I find tends to have students working on things in class uh, or really just having kind of first take over their lives, which isn't something I like to see. Um, with that, I, I think having uh, like goal dates and whatnot are fantastic for figuring out when something is designed and built uh, and assembled. But ultimately, uh, I think the, the key to hitting those dates are proper planning in the, in the preseason and uh, approaching challenges in a way that your team can handle both in terms of knowledge and training and experience. Um, and by setting proper uh, scopes and, and projects, you'll the, the deadlines will come as being able to be met. Yeah, I would agree. I think a big part of it is really kind of one of those things that the student teach themselves as they go. I think time management and project management in general is something that you kind of have to jump into it and learn as you go. It's not something that you can really like spend all night studying and be like, oh, now I know everything about it. So kind of utilizing um, the combination of having new students come in, but having students that have already been through a season and they kind of know how things go and shift. I know for, for us in Israel, most teams compete in either like the first Israeli event or the second one, and they both in recent years fell on week one. So you kind of know in advance kind of where it's going to fall and plan accordingly. Um, so kind of already have those experienced students trying to teach and also kind of like let them have their own 
deadlines, uh, set them themselves and just be there to help them and see if they can keep them eventually. Yeah. Um, something that I find is, is really crucial is going back to having multiple, you know, backup options, points of failure. Um, you know, with just simplifying it down to our CAD, um, our goal is always to have the CAD, the full CAD, robot CAD done in the first two weeks. Um, this year, we've set the very lofty goal of the first week. We want it done by like that first Sunday, which is crazy. Um, but I think it's actually doable because we have a large CAD team. And so if one person has to take a night off to go do homework, to do family stuff, we have somebody else who already knows what's happening, who can pick up right where they left off. Um, and continue working. And I think that multiple points of failure um, and then flexibility, being able to pick up after someone, being able to um, to shift when things aren't going quite to plan are all really important. Um, they're students, they have lives, they have families. I can't even tell you when I was a student how many times my mom would get mad at me because I was at the shop until like 10 p.m. Um, being crazy. So it, it's really important to just be flexible and let them adjust where they need to. One thing I'll I'll throw on to that uh, for having those deadlines, one thing I always like to schedule in is approximately the final week and a half to really be hands off the robot. Now, most years that doesn't happen. Uh, you're, you're working on your robot through then and you know, your, your timeline might be shot. However, having that time is a great buffer to hopefully at least have a few days of hands off at the end. But if you're a northern team, you have uh, snow days and inclement weather, and really you, you have that all around the world. Maybe you're held up for a day or two because you're trying to ship some gearbox you didn't have in stock. Uh, there's always a bunch of, of small delays where having a, a week or two buffer at the end will definitely come in to save you. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and it's also really helpful, you know, like Danny said, um, being able to know exactly when your competitions are um, can really help us plan. Like my team is competing week one. So we already know we're competing at the end of February. We have two months. That's it. There is no extra time that we can throw in because we're already hitting competitions. Um, and so with that, we've kind of shrunk a lot of our goals this year, preseason to adjust for that time so that you know, if we have, if we manage to get the CAD done week one, we can have the, the whole robot manufactured by week four of build. That gives us almost, like, it gives us like three and a half, almost four weeks for drive practice, um, programming, all of the, you know, man, maintaining all of these things, the breaking points that you never know exist, all of those things. Um, and so I think that that's really, really important um, because without deadlines, you're not functional, but with too strict of deadlines, you're not functional either. Keep in mind, team organization can come from anywhere. It doesn't have to be from a mentor or captain. What will work for your team um, may not work for others, but do what works for your team to ensure that you guys have a successful season. Plan the work and work the plan. Thanks for joining us for the first episode of Fundamentals, an educational series for FRC teams. Now that we've covered how to organize your team through preseason, season methods and softwares, and how to work your plan, Leave any questions that you have in the comments. Don't forget to follow us on social media and join us for the next episode of Fundamentals. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.